Welcome to another edition of VM Blog's expert interview video series. Today, we're excited to have with us Liquidware's CTO, Jason Maddox, someone who is very familiar to the virtualization community. Jason, I think this is your first time on video with VM Blog, isn't it? It is. Happy to be doing this first one with you. Good. Well, welcome aboard. Thanks. So, uh, I just wanted to kick things off really quickly. Uh, let's jump right into this week's announcement uh, about a new version of Profile Unity and FlexApp version 6.8. Can you give us some of the highlights of what's new? Yep. So, 6.8's been in development for a while. And our focus for the past year has been incrementally removing the need for SMB shares when going to the cloud. And part of this is advancing FlexApp in a direction where we don't need Windows file shares to manage in the cloud. The point of going to the cloud is to remove infrastructure, to remove management overhead. So we've done a lot of work to remove the need for file shares in the cloud. And to do this, there's a block caching technology involved. Um, there's other things involved where we can cache blocks for, for on our on-prem customers with SMB shares. Um, we've improved the execution time for this release. Um, everybody loves to ask for faster logins, but they don't know how to get there. So we continue to improve the login performance of the product. So there's been quite a few enhancements uh, with this release. Now, uh, Jason, many of these uh, new industry first features are quite cloudy, not to, no pun intended, or maybe pun intended, but um, do you see a real demand for desktops in the cloud? There's a definitely a big draw. Um, it's kind of starting out like VDI did years ago, where everybody would take their task worker and move them to VDI, then they would incrementally go to their power user. So I think everybody's doing the same thing again. They're saying, can I take that task worker that has you know, that menial tasks that doesn't need a full-blown PC for, but I want the benefits of you know, centralized management. I want the reduced cost and overhead. Um, I want to go from you know, CapEx to OpEx, and this is where this is happening. Customers are looking at Amazon Workspaces. They're looking at Amazon AppStream. They're looking at Citrix on all three cloud public clouds. They're looking at well, Microsoft WVD. So the direction is there. The acceleration is happening a lot quicker than we, than we had thought. And, and can you explain in more detail the uh, significance of all the new features from uh, a business benefits perspective? Yeah, so from the business point of view, you know, you can have, um, you know, file shares, you can have infrastructure on-prem or in the cloud. But when you go to the cloud, you just don't want to do IaaS. You don't want to just do infrastructure as a service. You don't want to have to have a, an operating system you have to secure, you have to maintain. You want to remove all that from your management overhead. That's the whole point of the cloud. So let's leverage cloud services like object-based storage. Object-based storage is fully scalable, fully replicated. It's all HA. It performs well. Um, it's a storage medium that is fully managed by the cloud vendor for you, so you remove the need for having to figure out how to make a Windows file share HA, how to cluster it, how to replicate it, how to make sure it's available in a single region, you know, in, in, a, in a DR scenario. So this really helps from a business benefit um, going from CapEx to OpEx. It helps from a manpower point of view. You're just not managing clusters and clusters of Windows file shares, which nobody really wants to manage in the end. So with all the uh, solutions that you provide, what separates you from the pack? I think, I think the key is we're building the technology uh, in building blocks over the years. So it's very agile technology. So we've been able to adapt this technology to the cloud where other vendors are in our space will have a very difficult time adapting the technology away from SQL servers and file shares and all these things that traditionally they need to run. And sure, you could run a SQL server potentially in the cloud as IaaS, or you could pay extra money for SQL server backend with a cloud provider, but let's remove the need for all that infrastructure overall and reduce the costs. And, and, th and that's, I think, key for us is, is building architecture in a smart way. And then we keep on making that architecture extensible and easier to use as we go. And I guess if I can kind of piggyback off of that question, I'm kind of curious as to either what you or your clients consider, you know, the unique aspects about your solutions. Yeah, the, the unique aspects, again, are going to be the low footprint that we already have. And then the, the core technology we have is, has a small footprint, but then the technology has to touch the environment. 
it has to touch the file shares and the domain controllers, the user's desktop. So if we can take all the areas of the small footprint and make it even smaller in the end, I think that's key for us because we look at all the competitors we have, they're very heavyweight solutions. They're very heavy, they're very uh, taxing to put in, many months and months of consulting services. Our stuff can get up and running in just a few hours, uh, even with cloud integration. So there's really such a low overhead for getting off and running and getting off and running in the cloud even more. So with all of uh, Liquidware's offerings, um, you seem to have a pretty solid partnership with uh, a few different companies that you've been focused on lately. Can you talk a little bit more about maybe those partnerships and how you work with them? Yeah, definitely. So if you look at it from the public cloud perspective, on the Amazon side, we're doing quite a bit with Amazon Workspaces, so a persistent desktop in the cloud. Um, Amazon AppStream, we're doing a lot of work with Amazon AppStream with a flex app point of view. You know, Workspaces is a full desktop. Amazon AppStream is published applications. So we're helping to provide kind of a dynamic user experience to published applications with um, Amazon AppStream. And then you fast forward to what Microsoft's announced. Uh, they're moving to a Windows virtual desktop, and that is a multi-user desktop on Azure. And in that environment, we still can provide value for a dynamic app user experience where the the least number of images is possible, the least number of pools and fleets is possible, because the utopia is you have one golden image for everybody. It's one image, it provides universal flexibility, and then all the apps the user experience, user experience monitoring kind of comes in seamlessly to the user regardless. So we're, we're going to, we're poised to provide a lot of uh, value to all three public clouds. And if you look at the Google perspective, they're kind of agnostic. So you're going to see Citrix supporting Google and GCS, and that's in GCP. That's going to be really interesting because now you can take Citrix and put it on Google and you can apply Liquidware on top of that to, to again reduce the management overhead of file share IaaS, so it's it's really going to make a big impact across all brokers across all clouds. And then, Jason, is there uh, any you know hints, tips, or tricks that you could share with the folks watching this video at home uh, based on this uh, the latest release that you're uh, announcing? Um, I would say you know depending on where you're trying to apply the technology. You know, if you're trying to apply it to, you know, a greenfield environment, you know, everything is kind of uh, self-sustaining in a way. But if you're looking to maybe migrate from an existing broker to another broker, I think the, the key takeaway is that we are agnostic. You know, we've taken the, the OS and the broker and created a throwaway scenario. We abstract user out their data. We abstract the user profile. We can uh, record the user experience of the user on the existing cloud and or broker. So then when you look at where will you be in five years from now, you may not be sure where you'll be from five years, five years from now. You may say I may be on Citrix, maybe on Amazon, may I be on WVD. Well, in the end, because we captured everything that makes up the user experience and the user themselves, all you have to provide is a new image and a new broker, and we can bring everything else back in, including in that process to migrate from the existing storage infrastructure and image that you have into a new image, a new cloud, and a new broker. So those capabilities are there to help you go toward the future, to be agnostic, to not be tied down to any one vendor or broker going forward. And that gives you the most flexibility. I think that's a key trick and takeaway. Um, if anything, uh, I'll, you know, I'll mention, you know, if you're going to do anything in the public cloud, you should definitely do your homework on the public cloud you're going to pick and uh, do your testing. You know, we can definitely help you with that. So Jason, you know, you've stated that you consider yourselves the last independent solution on the market uh, after some of the acquisition the news that have happened in the you know, past few weeks. Um, can you talk about, uh, you know, what this means and why? Yeah, I think I think I covered a little of this, I think. Uh, but there's kind of if you look at um, the user experience, you know, management market, you know, who's left on the market. We're the only independent vendor left there. When it comes to application layering, we're the only independent vendor left. Um, you look at monitoring, there's very few people that have provide monitoring at the depth that we provide when it comes down to the process level of the user. And even though the brokers or the, the cloud vendor may own 
a little bit of layering or a little bit of application delivery or a little bit of monitoring, we are laser focused on all three areas. So we will always exceed and excel beyond what the platform provides. So even though you might see Microsoft make an announcement, you don't know where that technology is going to go long term. You don't know where it's going to be. So it might be one slice of the pie when we provide all the rest of the feature sets that we do. We could still provide application layers. We could still provide you know, user profiles on the Microsoft OS and different clouds potentially. We could provide user experience monitoring on that Microsoft stack. So there's always going to be gaps to fill. Um, Microsoft exists because of the ecosystem. All the vendors exist because of the ecosystem. They can't fix every problem in the world, even though they might try. Um, there's other vendors that are going to do it better like ourselves. Like I said, we're laser focused on these three areas, user experience monitoring, application layering, and user environment management. And we're going to excel and create innovation that's going to uh, push beyond what the platform provides. Uh, you mentioned a little bit about Microsoft. Can you maybe tell us a little bit more about like Microsoft uh, WVD? Yeah, so this is an interesting play on Microsoft. They're, they're, as they've announced, they've created a multi-user multi version of Windows 10, um, where traditionally multi-user Windows was 2016 server. Well, now they've created multi-user Win 10, and that's mm -hmm. going to be provided on Azure only. Um, and you know, your strategy there will be to get as many users on a single instance on that uh, WVD as you can to drive down your Azure compute costs. And in that scenario, you, know, you still have uh, issues with uh, the number of images you might have, the number of applications that might be in the image, how often you got to take down the pool and reprovision it to update applications. So, and you still have a user experience monitoring you're going to want to do. You're going to want to keep Microsoft honest. You're going to want to make sure user experience is good, that their users are happy, that you can understand that the infrastructure may not be down, but if it's slow and has hotspots, you know about it. You want to make sure that you can dynamically provide applications to those users so that you don't have to go back in and reprovision. Because unfortunately, the cloud is the cloud, but still moving gigs and gigs of data still takes time. It's a law of physics. So let's avoid the law of physics and bring the applications in from the outside in um, and leave the images alone. So I think, I think that's going to be key to helping Microsoft accelerate their adoption of, of their virtual desktop on Azure. Now, I don't think I heard you mention Nutanix, but uh, are you guys supporting Nutanix Frame? Absolutely. We're working with Nutanix Frame. Um, similar scenario, they're another broker. They have a, a neat way of providing things. You know, They have their own protocol. They've written from the ground up uh, with things, so we're definitely supporting Nutanix Frame. And the neat thing is Nutanix Frame started out in the cloud, and they're going to start doing more things with Nutanix uh, itself and they're still gonna support all three clouds. So we'll be able to support them in their mission to be another choice, another option out there in the world when it comes to a different way of delivering desktops and applications because they still have the similar challenges the rest of the vendors do with images and user experience and persisting user author data, persisting the profile. So we're definitely working with Nutanix Frame in that capacity, just like the other vendors, we are very agnostic. We're very Switzerland. Um, we want to help everybody succeed in the market, and there's always good when you have choice. Well, th um, thanks again, Jason, for joining me and David uh, on this call. And you know, we're looking forward to the release of Profile Unity and Flex App, and uh, you know, hope to see it come out soon.